Hey friends, my name is Osama, and if you're new to my channel, it's all about nuclear science and technology. In this video, I'll be breaking down the world's greenhouse gas emissions one by one. Why am I doing this? Well, the reason why is because globally, as nations across the world, we are all on the path to get to net zero. And in order to get to net zero, we first have to understand our problem. Where exactly are our greenhouse gases coming from? And also, this will help us come up with innovative technologies to start combating climate change. So overall, human activity across the world produces a total of 51 billion tons of greenhouse gases every single year. And this is only anticipated to rise unless we do something fast. The way greenhouse gases work is they stay in the atmosphere for long periods of time. And in that time, they continuously keep the earth warm. Ultimately, this leads to the warming of our globe and climate change. Unless you're living under a rock, we know that climate change comes with some drastic consequences, which include extreme weather patterns, droughts, floods, agricultural land being impacted, and many, many more things. It's a chain of events that are happening. We need to make upfront investments so that eventually down the line, we don't have to pay such a big cost. Let's start off with a quick breakdown of where our greenhouse gases come from. Number one, electricity production. 27% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Now this is the bread and butter of my YouTube channel and something that I'm very passionate about. It's exactly where nuclear energy can play a big role and I'll discuss a bit more in this video. Number two, making things. We love to make things, buildings, lots of concrete, cement, steel to reinforce those buildings. That's a total of 31%. It's by far the most amount of greenhouse gas emissions by any source. Number three, growing things, agriculture, beef, farms. This is 19%, it's quite a bit. Number four, transportation, planes, trucks, cargo, 16%. Hopefully in the few future years to come, this will start dropping down because of electrification. And number five, keeping things warm and keeping things cool. So heating, cooling, refrigerator. So this is around 7% of our total greenhouse gas emissions. So let's start off with my favorite, electricity production, power production, 27% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Overall, this emission source is anticipated to increase over time because of electrification of various industries. You're seeing the transport industry become electrified, like with the Tesla Model S. That's a car on my bucket list, which I really wanna buy after you know I get to a million subscribers, which you can help me with by clicking the subscribe button. And also many other industries in the world. At the moment, worldwide, 40% of our electricity comes from coal, which is horrible for the environment and also for human health. And this hasn't changed for the last 30 years. So humanity, we really need to up our game when it comes to production of electricity. Oil and natural gas make up around 26% of electricity production across the world. So overall, an overwhelming majority of electricity production is coming from fossil fuel sources. And this is something that can easily be mitigated by existing technologies like nuclear energy and also renewables. One esteemed person that I really love is Bill Gates. And not only because he came up with Microsoft, but because he's also leading investments in some great innovative technologies like nuclear energy. And he makes the case for nuclear power by saying, it's the only carbon free energy source that can reliably deliver power day and night through every season, almost anywhere on earth and has been proven to work on a large scale. Now this in a nutshell gives you a selling point for nuclear power. It's scalable, it's a proven resource, it can power day and night in any terrain and it's incredible simply. Overall, you know, there's a lot of research that's taking place by MIT researchers who explored around 1,000 scenarios for the United States to get to net zero emissions. Now, all of the cheapest paths to get to net zero involved nuclear energy as a necessary component. Now, this is incredible because nuclear energy is not only an incredibly innovative technology, but it's also very cheap uh, in the long run. Overall, this research proves that we need nuclear energy as a core aspect of electrification moving forward. Also, what's interesting to know is that nuclear Power plants produce zero greenhouse gas emissions while operating, but they also use first class efficiency in using materials like cement, steel, and other materials for construction. So not only is the, are the plants incredible at producing electricity with zero greenhouse gas emissions during the process, but also the, their use of these materials is extremely efficient. 
So in terms of getting more energy per pound of material that goes into construction, well, nuclear is the way to go. Secondly, I'd like to point out uh, the second aspect, making things. Cements, steel, plastic, humans, we love to make things, we love to construct. And one of these construction materials that's used very, very prominently throughout the world is concrete. So concrete, it's made out of gravel, sand, water. However, concrete, in concrete, the troubling ingredient is actually cement. And the reason why is because in order to make cement, you need to heat up limestone to get calcium. During this heating process, usually you need fossil fuel sources to get that supply of heat. Once this limestone is heated, it produces calcium oxide and also carbon dioxide. By 2050, the world is projected to produce around 4 billion tons of CO2 from concrete alone. And at the moment, it is producing 2.7 billion tons of CO2 per year. So you'll see that we are consistently using more and more construction resources. America, it produces around 96 million tons of cement or around 600 pounds for every single person in the United States. China, on the other hand, has installed more concrete in the first 16 years of the 21st century than the US in the entire 20th century. So you're seeing that trend with developing nations like China and slowly Africa and other countries using crazy amounts of concrete and cement to produce skyscrapers, bridges, and whatnot. And that releases a lot of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases. Number two is steel. Steel, in order to make steel, it's simple. You need iron and you need carbon. And this produces a lot of carbon dioxide. In order to make one ton of steel, you it produces 1.8 tons of carbon dioxide. Now, by 2050, the world will be producing around 5 billion tons of CO2 from steel production alone. Whereas at the moment, it's producing around 3.7 billion tons of CO2. So steel produces a lot more carbon dioxide than cement but these two are, are both equ equally dangerous. Now let's jump into growing things. We all need food to eat. We need, we need to eat meat. Oh, well, we, need, we don't need to necessarily, but it tastes pretty good. Overall growing things, 19% of our world's greenhouse gas emissions. So when it comes to agriculture and farming, majority of our emissions actually come from two main culprits methane and nitrous oxide. So when you're doing calculations in terms of the impact in, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, you use a conversion ratio to, to that of CO2. It, so let's start off with cows. Cows or the beef industry alone produces around 2 billion tons of CO2. That's 4% of the world's global uh, CO2 emissions. Okay, which is insane, right? A majority of these emissions from cows comes from their burps, okay? And secondly, it's the animal poop that produces the second most amount of greenhouse gas emissions. So another product that's really important in the agriculture industry is fertilizers. Now, fertilizers are another really big source of greenhouse gas emissions. And one of the main ingredients that goes into fertilizers is an ingredient called ammonia. Ammonia, in order to produce ammonia, you need a lot of heat, okay? And this heat usually comes from natural gas plants. Now there's ongoing research that's happening at the moment where small modular reactors, which are small mini reactors, which could be deployed on mass for relatively cheap cost are being investigated to see if they can be used for process heat to produce fertilizers. This is research that's taking place actually in Indonesia. And this comes with the benefit of reduced emissions in terms of greenhouse gases. Also another source is application of these fertilizers once farmers apply these fertilizers on mass, they release lots of nitrous oxide into the environment and into the atmosphere, which is, like I said, 265 times worse than carbon dioxide in terms of atmospheric uh, impact. Now let's jump into transportation. Now I love my driving, I love flying on vacations, but unfortunately it, it produces around 16% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. You may, it may seem to you like that's not a lot, but fun fact in the United States alone, this is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions. It's transportation. So Americans, they love to fly, drive, everything a lot, right? So in terms of transportation, you'll see that 
electrification of that industry is taking place in our lifetimes. But what's most important is there is shipping cargo accounts for around 3% of the world's emissions. This can easily be mitigated by converting shipping cargo ships to that of using nuclear energy. So this is a great way in which to reduce these emissions. Nuclear marine transportation has been used in icebreakers and submarines. It's a very well-known technology that's used across the oceans in our world. Cargo shipping is an area where these uh, reactor technologies can be applied. Lastly, let's jump into keeping warm and cool. So in order to have a high quality of life, you need to stay warm in the winters and cool in the summers. So heating, cooling, and refrigeration, like you see my refrigerator back there. So that's around 7% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Now the International Agents Energy Agency projects that demand for cooling will increase three times by 2050. In that time, ACs, air conditioners, will consume as much energy as all of China and India at the same time. That's crazy. So it's interesting to know a trend that 90% of the population in wealthier countries have access to air conditions, whereas 10% of the populations in poor country do. This trend will change very fast. Greenhouse gas emissions are also produced from heating. So if you're living in countries like Canada, like myself, or in Switzerland or areas where you need heating, this produces quite, quite a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. So furnaces that, uh, that heat up our homes, they use natural gas. So that, so that is another source. So overall, in conclusion, um, this is the world's greenhouse gas emissions and an overview and a detailed breakdown of where these emissions come from. This information is really valuable because it helps us understand how we can get to net zero and quickly. How can we come up with innovative technologies that can be deployed en masse to help these various industries and also, and also at the same time help improve our quality of life. So what I personally learned from this breakdown is that there are three main sources of greenhouse gas production. Number one, fossil fuels to generate electricity. We need to ultimately reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. One of the main ways we can do this is through mass implementation of nuclear reactor technologies, which are extremely safe. That's what my channel is all about. It's about removing misconceptions and it's about co communicating these topics in a very simple, easy way. Number two, fossil fuels to generate heat to create materials like concrete and plastics. In order to create these materials, you need to provide that process heat and that can come from nuclear energy and from other um, and, and from other sustainable energy resources. And number three is emissions that are released from production of these materials. So not only do these materials require heat to be produced, which releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, but also once these, as these materials are being produced, they also release greenhouse gases. So those are the three big uh, main sources of greenhouse gases in our world. And it may help you brainstorm some ways in which we can come up with some interesting technologies to help, uh, to help work around that. If you enjoyed this video, I recommend you take the time to check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel. Um, I love talking about nuclear science and technology and how these technologies can be used to combat climate change. Uh, so there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.